If you were to ask somebody who their wrestler of the year is at this point in time, you'd likely hear the following names thrown around. John Moxley, Roman Reigns, Brian Danielson, Bianca Belair, Hangman Page, CM Punk, and more. The more hardcore wrestling fan would propose the following names. Shuri, Saya Kamatani, Will Ospreay, Ilya Dragunov, and others. All very good wrestlers in their own right and consistent in the fact that they have all for the most part have been wrestling since the beginning of the year with minimal time missed. Exception of course being that small period of time Danielson was injured, Reigns taking a lighter schedule the second half of the year so far, and Dragunov recently getting injured. But what if I told you that right now none of these wrestlers are my current wrestler of the year? What if I told you that in my opinion the gap between my selected competitor and the rest is wide? Even more shockingly that it isn't Utami Hayashishida, and you guys know how much I love her work. But this wrestler is closely associated with Utami, and when it comes to her work, there is not a single wrestler, not counting tag teams, but even then it's pretty, it's not really that close, that has entertained me from match to match, as well as Stardom's three-letter high-speed demon. Azumi is a 19-year-old Japanese wrestler for Japanese promotion Stardom. Currently, she is in her second reign of 180 plus days as Stardom's High Speed Champion. The High Speed Championship is a championship meant for those who work a faster, more high flying style of wrestling. Essentially, it is like if you combine the elements of a cruiserweight championship with the X Division Championship. And to me, there is no better wrestler that showcases this style better than Azumi. Four matches, three from this year to prove her Wrestler of the Year status. So right off the bat, you're probably wondering why am I including one match that isn't from 2022 when I'm talking about Azumi's impressive year. Well, I wanted to include a sort of little introductory match. After all, the main point of this video is to talk mainly about Azumi and her high-speed greatness. And to me, the match that truly exemplifies this is her 2021 bout with Natsupoi. Yes, Natsupoi makes her a reappearance on this channel with her high-speed title match against Azumi in 2021 at Stardom's All-Star Dream Cinderella event. While I discovered Stardom in 2020, 2021 was the year I really got into it and this was the match that did it. Azumi at the time of the match was in her first reign as high-speed champion and has held it for 220 days. Going against Natsupoi, she was looking to make her fifth defense of the title. Right from the get-go, the two demonstrate the high-speed nature. They both quickly run the ropes and attempt to hit moves on each other, only for the other to quickly evade the attack. Natsupoi even uses two cartwheels to evade Azumi's attacks. There is a point where both women attempt drop kicks at the same time and miss each other. Natsupoi whips Azumi into a corner, who then attempts to try and make a move out of it, only for Natsupoi to drop kick her and send her to the outside. Natsupoi herself attempts a move from the top only to be kicked to the outside where Azumi hits Natsupoi with her patented double foot stomp from the top rope. Azumi hits a beautiful springboard drop kick while Natsupoi herself hits a brutal drop kick to Azumi laying on the bottom rope similar to the one Sarai uses. The match then sees a plethora of moves, cross bodies, another double foot stomp, rolling pin attempts, Azumi even starts working the arm for her arm bar. Azumi goes for a spinning diving cross body only to be caught midair with a drop kick. Natsupoi gains a ton of momentum here and then later hits one of the most beautiful moves I've ever seen that is really difficult to describe with words. Azumi is hunched over and Natsupoi jumps and while spinning in the air hits a rolling power bomb onto Azumi. Genuinely one of the most innovative moves I've seen. Still was not enough for the three though. Even the suplex and the twisted bliss afterwards is not enough. There's a fun little spot where Azumi attempts to roll up Natsupoi for the win, only for the two to continue counter roll up and rolling around the ring. Finally, Natsupoi hits 
Azumi, with four cross-arm German suplexes for the win, thus becoming high-speed champion. An amazing match between two women who truly exemplified that high-speed spirit. Now, we get into her marvelous work of 2022. The first match of Azumi's 2022 run that I would like to highlight is her high-speed title match with Mei Suruga. Mei is most known for her work in Gato Move Pro Wrestling, another promotion in Japan. She won an inter-promotional battle royale and later in the night at that event would challenge Azumi to a match for the high-speed championship. Now, before getting into this match, you have to know that a lot of this match is built off of character work. Many people on social media were torn between loving and hating the antics in this match. So go in with the knowledge that you're going to see some quote unquote silly spots. And to start off the match, the two attempt to lock up, but each woman escapes the other. Until Mei gets the advantage and then poses with Azumi and even wraps Azumi's arm around her for a pose. Azumi's visibly shaken by these antics. Almost in a way if she feels that Mei is just playing around with her and she's not taking this match seriously. Mei avoids the kicks and poses. She's spinning and rolling Azumi around the ring before turning it into a pin. She's twisting Azumi's hair and even wrapping it around the ropes. And the part of the match that really got people talking. Mei hides behind the ref to avoid Azumi. Both women begin to run the ropes and run circles around the ref. And even use the ref to help themselves execute certain moves. Mei's tactics do bite her at moments. She taunts Azumi at ringside before she hits a move, but it gives Azumi enough time to counter, and this leads to Mei trying to roll her up, only for it to turn into both women rolling each other down the aisle into the crowd. As they come back, Mei hits a beautiful kick to Azumi after using the outside turnbuckle as a launching point. Mei continues her antics by even grabbing the headset from one of the commentators and talking into it, only for Azumi to come back and attack her, and this sets up a huge dive onto the outside. Azumi hits her double foot stop from the top for a two count. After, do after she does her patented Hurricane Rana into an armbar, Mei herself starts working Azumi's arm later in the match. We then see a ton of beautiful counters and pin counters by both women. And it is a result of one of these counters that Azumi is able to get a deep pin roll up for the win. A wonderful match that definitely showcased Azumi's versatility, especially the fact that she demonstrated she could work a character slash story driven match. Continuing to demonstrate her versatility, let's take a look at her technical work because as you heard in the last match there was talk about working the arm. While this was a short match due to injury limitations. Azumi's bout with Tekla this year was a wonderful look at submission and limb work within a high speed competition. Immediately off the bat, the two are trying to get their strikes in and wrestle each other to the ground. Tekla gets Azumi locked in the ropes on one side and when the count reaches 5, transitions it to the other side to start a whole new count. Azumi is struggling to get a read on Tekla. Anytime she tries, she isn't able to fully capitalize on anything. Her high-flying moves and even basic strikes don't land as Tekla just simply evades them each time. However, Azumi is able to catch Tekla off guard. She makes it seem like she's going for a head kick, so Tekla goes up to guard only to have her legs swept by Azumi. And here, Azumi gains the momentum and begins to work the arm. As Tekla attempts to get up from the leg sweep, Azumi kicks her left arm and Tekla lets out a scream full of anguish. Azumi then gets Tekla on the ropes and double foot stomps the left arm. As Tekla recovers, she begins striking Azumi's leg and lower back. Literally, there's a portion where she just repeatedly kicks her lower back and then hits her with a huge kick to the head that almost sends Azumi to the outside. Tekla attempts a clothesline onto a seated Azumi, only to have the left arm caught in an arm bar by Azumi. Tekla does a really good job of selling the pain, screaming in pain as uh, her arm is just wrenched back. She barely gets the tip of her boot on the bottom of the rope to break the count. But Azumi does not step off the gas. Tekla hits her with a spear, but it's obvious it wasn't at full power as Tekla holds the left arm in agony. And within the time, oh, within that time, sorry, Azumi is already up and hits Tekla with a suplex. The finishing moments of the match are especially brutal. Tekla escapes a pin attempt only for Azumi to do a jumping foot stomp onto Tekla's chest three times. 
She attempts to hit a top rope foot stomp, only for Tekla to move and then chop block Azumi. But Azumi gets the roll up and then later transitions it into a brutal submission on the arm. Azumi lays back and really wrenches that left arm as Tekla submits in pure pain and agony. Even being injured, Tekla still attempts to fight Azumi, but does not stop selling the pain in her left arm, likely as the real in real life injury she has. In her post match promo, Azumi unexpectedly thanks Tekla, saying that she was glad that she brought a new dimension to high speed. So, we've seen Azumi's versatility, displaying her work rate, character work, technical work. What about the final piece? The final match I want to cover displays her storytelling ability and is the main reason why Azumi is my current wrestler of the year. I want to introduce you to Azumi vs. Starlight Kid, the battle between eternal foes. Starlight Kid is a fellow stardom wrestler currently 21 years old and made her debut in 2015. If you do the math correctly, she was 14 when she made her debut. Azumi made her debut back in 2013, where she was 11. Yep, that young. And so the two have been truly tied together their entire career. The two first met in December of 2015 in a short match, and then again two weeks later where Kid picked up her first win. The two would spend the next couple of years having various matches, especially against each other, and be looked upon as the future of stardom. But... There was a clear favorite. The two have faced off 10 times one on one. Before 2020, Azumi never got the victory over Kid. There was always two outcomes. She either lost to Kid, or the match ended in a time limit draw. It even got to the point that Stardom President uh, Rossi Ogawa stated in an interview that he thought Starlight Kid was not only more popular, but more marketable. It wasn't until 2019 that Azumi was given her chance to prove everybody wrong as she entered Stardom's most grueling tournament, the 5 Star Grand Prix, as a replacement. She would rack up 8 points in her block and showcase her wrestling ability. This performance really helped her close that gap between her and Kid. And though the two continued to shine, they both knew there was one final goal for them. A championship. Due to being young and still in school, the world titles were out of the picture. And though the two captured various titles, such as the future, or well, Starlight Kid would capture the future of Stardom Championship, and Azumi would capture the trios titles in Stardom. It was the High Speed Championship that really spoke to them. You know, it was a belt that really represented them, their style, and what they believed was wrestling. Azumi would win the title, and in early 2020, beat Kid to retain the title. There's even an image of Azumi taunting Kid with the fact that she got the belt first. Kid would later have a run with that same belt. However, she won it off of Natsupoi, who beat Azumi for the belt. And it's here that we finally reach the final match. In 2021, Kid would turn heel and she was aligned with Stardom's notable heel faction, Oedotai. Gone was the bright colors of stars and in was black and purple with a more aggressive attitude. The match came to be as fellow Queen's Quest member Momo Watanabe would just would join Oedotai, nailing her tag partner Azumi over the head with a chair. Now, it is February 23rd, 2022, and it is Stardom's Cinderella Journey. High Speed Champion Starlight Kid defending against challenger Azumi. As Kid walks down to the ring, on her cape are the specially designed masks to represent each person that has fallen before her in her high speed ring. She, she is all, before each of her matches with these people, she's had the mask custom made and after the match, after she's beating them, she's forced it, the mask onto her opponent and, you know, run her thumb around her neck signaling the kill. She hopes to add another with Azumi. The match is immediately fast paced. They are attempting roll up pins, Azumi is trying to lock in her arm bar, and both women are trying to get the advantage. The two lay in stiff strikes to one another, and when I say stiff, I mean stiff. You can hear the thuds, not slaps, actual thuds of the arm laying into the chest and head. Azumi gets a beautiful springboard arm drag transitions into an arm wrench. 
The two wrestle to the outside, and just like the thuds before, we see Kid arm drag Azumi onto the wooden floor of the venue. She then hits a springboard moonsault onto Azumi on the outside, very Sami Zayn-esque if I had to provide a visual. Kid attempts a top rope move, but Azumi gets her in the tree of woe position. As Kid attempts to elevate out of it, Azumi hits her with a brutal kick and then a meteora on the way down. As Kid attempts to regroup with her fellow Oerotai members on the outside, Azumi does a huge dive on Kid and the other members. Back in the ring, Azumi is doing everything to lock in the armbar. Kid gets a close two count on a roll up, but Azumi continues to work the arm, laying in a sick kick to the arm, just like she would do the Tekla later in the year. Kid avoids a top rope foot stomp and then catches Azumi with an arm drag off the top. And it is here where the high speed style is really taken literally. The two women are hitting move after move until Kid is able to put some space between them by countering a suplex into a DDT. We then see some more classic spots such as the rolling pin and other back and forth pins. Azumi gets a close two count as she fakes out the arm bar and gets a deep pin in. Kid then attempts her top rope Spanish fly known as Eternal Foe. She first used the move on Azumi months back but much like the two have grown together over the years, Azumi has grown to know her rival's tendencies. Kid still hits the move but on the bounce Azumi is able to shortly turn it into an arm bar. And it is here, after all this time, that the full arsenal comes out. Kicks to the head, a Canadian destroyer, and finally, Azumi locks in a deep arm wrench. Both of Kid's arms are stretched to the limit as Kid is forced to finally submit. Kid's reign ends as her rival's second reign begins. Despite always being in her shadow, Azumi is the one to finally close the gap between the two and conquer her eternal foe. While she rejoices in her victory, the two truly demonstrate their growth as wrestlers and characters in the post-match promo. Kid hands Azumi the custom mask, signaling her to do what Kid did to her opponents, only for Azumi to throw it away and the two fist bump in mutual respect. Kid taps the belt to simply remind Azumi she'll be back and the two will definitely see each other once again. Thank you all for joining and listening in on another episode. It's been a long time since I've done a closing outro like this, but I got a lot to say. I first off just want to apologize for there not being a game day episode in so long. I allowed myself to get demotivated by stuff that truly should not have mattered to me. I also want to thank, uh, thank, I also want to thank Trent Brewer of WrestleIn. His article on Azumi's and Kids History really helped me cover and understand their final match this year. Link to that article will be in the description. While three matches may not be enough to convince you of uh, Azumi's wrestler of the year status, you know, uh, I hope this at least intrigues you to check out more of her work this year. If you want specific matches to try and go out of your way to find, I recommend her participation in the Steel Cage match between Queen's Quest and Stars, her recent five-star Grand Prix match with Momo, with uh, Momo Kogo. Sorry if I mispronounced that. Her recent 5 star Grand Prix match with Shuri, her False Count Anywhere Fatal Form match at Stardom and Showcase is a fun entertainment type match. Her match with Rina was a fun story of Azumi having to accept that she's the old hag now. And uh, though it is not going to happen till September 11, I am very much looking forward to her 5 star Grand Prix match with her Queen's Quest leader Utami Hayashishida. To all the Stardom fans, especially all the fans in Japan, I want to thank you all for your support for all the support you guys showed on my not support video i know i'm not the most experienced source but i truly am thankful for all the support on these videos with that being said thank you all for joining for another episode of game day and as always remember many things in this life may seem impossible but if you fight for your dreams your dreams will fight for you